All right, hello everyone. Welcome to today's video. Now, I don't know when this is gonna go up because uh, I don't have my laptop yet, but this we're, I'm filming this near the end of September or mid, late September, and I just got my Western Desert campaign book. I pre-ordered it from Warlord, so I ended up getting the Rommel figure as well. Let's see if you can see him. So that's Rommel. So actually, I now have my first unit of my German army. I'm going to end up getting doing a German army just because there's so many allied players in my area that we need more antagonists. So I'm going to you know, I'm still going to be doing my Polish stuff, but the I'll just have a German army on hand so I can play opponents. So when I start doing bat reps, which should not be long, hopefully even before this video comes out, uh, I'll be doing I'll be able to play you know Germans against you know allies. So it'll be a lot more entertaining than having you know U.S. against British or British against British. So all right, well, anyway, let's get back to Western Desert. I was intrigued when I saw them doing this because I have the Duel in the Sun book. Okay. Now, I was kind of figuring, what are they going to do different? But because this says the campaign in the Western Desert, I kind of figured it was going to be limited strictly to North Africa, whereas the uh, Duel in the Sun covers Sicily, Tunisia, and Italy itself. So it's the whole Mediterranean theater, really. So this does not really replace this, which is kind of nice. This is a huge improvement. Uh, in the scope of the game. It is a large book. You can see it's just as thick. I'm sorry, it's thicker than the you know, Duel in the Sun. So whereas this covers the entire Mediterranean theater, this covers just the action in, uh, in the Western Desert. <clears throat> so there's a lot of good information here and a lot of neat scenarios that are specific to the battles that were fought in Libya and Egypt. So, with that, let's uh, remember, don't, you don't have to get rid of this. It doesn't replace this. It simply supplements it and adds things that are not in here. So, let's go ahead and take a look at what's, what you're getting. Uh, I got, I'm sure there's going to be, by the time this actually gets released, I'm sure there's going to be dozens of review, product review things. So that's not what the purpose of this is. What I want to do is cover this and discuss it in terms of what you can do with it uh, as far as history and modeling the uh, you know a small army because when you get a book like this it may trigger some ideas things you may want to get into so let's take a quick look at the table of contents um, this is literally just I just opened this just got it yesterday and the way this is laid, laid out unlike some of the others uh, like Duel of the Sun because it covers so much it covers each area with a separate almost chapter. Here, what we do is we cover basically from the very beginning of the Italian invasion in Egypt all the way through to Second Battle of Alamein and what follows in late 1942. So you have basically two full years of fighting going on in this book. This is a two-year slice of World War II. It's a very narrow focus, which is really great. And I like the way they broke it down by the different operations, uh, going everything from Compass to Soul and Bloom, you know, through Brevity and Battle Axe, which preceded Crusader. Crusader is the big one, uh, especially one that I'm really paying a lot of attention to right now. Uh, then there's a big gap between Crusader and Gazala, because in this time, when as Crusader kind of petered out, Rommel had a chance to regroup. Six months later, he launched his next uh, campaign, and that led to eventually, within the last six months of the year, to the conclusion, really, of the struggle in Libya. Uh, and from that point on, things take a turn for the worse. No spoilers here, but, you know, I mean, if you're a history buff, you already know, after Second Battle of Alamein, they start, the axes start withdrawing. This, the situation just becomes pretty much hopeless for them, <clears throat> and you end up with the fighting in Tunisia. All right, so what this does not cover in the Western Desert is anything related to the U.S. and the Free French Forces, or sorry, the Vichy French Forces in Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco. Okay. In fact, this doesn't cover anything in Tunisia. 
However, there's a lot of new units. There are new units for British and Commonwealth. I'll, show, I'll go through some of those real quick. Italians get new units. I think there's a, these are a lot of new units, and they're very characteristic of the North African campaign. So I'm excited about that. Germans get some interesting new units that are very specific to the theater. So I'm glad they've, they've taken this narrow scope, because you get to see the very oddball things in here. Uh, as far as theater selectors go, they give you, unlike Duel in the Sun, where it tells you which selectors to use, and I think maybe gives you one or two can, uh, book specific theater selectors. This one gives you very specific theater selectors. Now look at the Africa Corps here. You've got four 1941 uh, selectors and three 1942 selectors. Going down to the level of trying to do, instead of just using a reinforced brigade, or sorry, platoon, you're using like the Panzer Division or a light Panzer Division, even an anti-tank gun platoon. So these aren't tank war. Uh, these aren't all tank war. Some of these are based on a tank war uh, theater selector or platoon selector, but a lot of these take what used to be out there and tweak them to make it more characteristic to fit the actual forces that fought during this very narrow period of history. Okay. All right, so let's take a quick look. Uh, you know, just like the other, it goes, you know, tells you a little bit of the background, goes through the scenarios one at a time, just, you know, and there's a lot of good scenarios, some great terrain pictures uh, to inspire you. Unfortunately, that's the last thing I need is more terrain work. I'm already behind there. But anyway, uh, let's move on to <clears throat> the uh, new units. Because this is where I think things get very interesting. And I'm going to skip the Dawn Raid sections here for a second. All right. British and Commonwealth new units. Now we have the Royal Engineers. So now, finally, there is an engineer unit to go with the five-man uh, engineer squad that's in <laughs> Warlord Games model line. <laughs> um, you do have the uh, a flamethrower, potentially. You can put a light machine gun in there. Uh, I'll have to... I think I'm going to have to make up some engineers now. Uh, and add a tank grenades. Now, the mine-clearing abilities are special rules they've got. And they do have the... Uh, uh, demolition charge, which is kind of nice too. Three-inch blast template, but now the the engineers are represented. The Royal engineers are actually represented. Right. The other two uh, units are essentially they've already been presented in Duel and Sun, but the lists here are actually tweaked a bit because the narrow the scope of this is only two years in the war. These are very specific to the two years. Of combat. So, in the case of the Scorpion Flail Tank, you can't buy it in experience like you could in uh, Duel in the Sun. And you don't have the option of taking it as a Mark III, which removes the turret and uh, uh, and, and weapon. So, you, basically, it's a weaponless mine clearing tank. But you don't have that in this because up to 1942, it wasn't in use, that Mark III. Same with the, the transport here. I'm really glad they broke this, this out because in the Duel in the Sun, they had. Uh, basically a command armored trucks. That was their lump they put everything into, including the Dorsetser. Dorsetser. They also had the Guy Lizard tank and uh, the AC 4x4, all the, all the kind of things that, that come in there. What they did is they specifically pulled out the Dorsetser and, well I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and what they did is tweaked it. So you can't, again, you can't buy it inexperienced if this one only transports up to six men, the original listing in Duel of Sun, which covered all the trucks, armored trucks, can carry ten. So, uh, this one does not have a tow capability, but it does have the command vehicle, which the other one did too. But the other, uh, the entry in Duel in the Sun does not, or Duel in the Desert, Duel in the Sun does not have uh, tow. So, very minor changes, but it's really, I'm glad they, they helped you Especially if you're not used to or you know knowledgeable in the history, it helps you really narrow down your the models to the specific time of in the war that these battles are fought, and it just to me that adds a lot of flavor to the tabletop game you're playing. All right, Italian units, this is great because when I was I've been playing uh, good old hex map type uh, board games, little cardboard shit type board games for decades now, oh boy, and in that. In the Western Desert uh, games I've got, Europa is the specific one I'm thinking of, uh, has, I'm going to 
really butcher this Italian name, but <laughs> the Bursa Glieri. Uh, these are motorized infantry, and they're they're actually more of an elite type. Uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they are. They're an elite uh, infantry unit within the Italian army. Contrary to popular belief, the Italians were not all uh, you know wimpy and surrendered first uh, shot in the desert. There were some good fighters there. They also start getting into the uh, Fogore parachutists. So these don't all have equivalents in Duel in the Sun, but these are very, very prominent in uh, the actions that the Africa Corps launched. So it's nice to see them represented. And gives, these are kind of neat because they're not the same as you'd expect in the, in the previous uh, iterations. So for example, these these vets are new Italian units that give you the opportunity to take two light machine guns and have three different special rules. Now, some of these I'm pretty sure are actually part of the Italian book. I don't own the Italian book, but it's nice to see that they've got, you know, they're tailoring the unit entries for the, the way the unit actually per performed. And a tank guns, it's nice to see another entry for any tank guns. You've got some more uh, vehicles, and what's really neat here is the self-propelled artillery. It lists several options of what it represents, including the British Morris CS-8. So the Italians did, took captured, you know, both sides took captured equipment and utilized it. So here you actually get to buy, at regular or veteran, a model that is a British model, the Morris C8, uh, CS-8, and put it in your Italian army. It's nice to see them do that. Uh, I don't see them doing that across the board with the captured anti tank guns and artillery, but that's okay. They have the rules about using captured equipment elsewhere in the book, which is basically the same as it was in Duel of the Sun. Uh, you've got the Brita 20mm anti tank gun, or sorry, anti aircraft gun. That's really nice to see an entry for. Uh, but again, there's no no irregular, or sorry, inexperienced option here. The Germans have some new units. Infantry get to have a light machine gun team. So all they've got is a three-man light machine gun team. So not only can you include one or two in your squads, but you can add a few extras on the side. <laughs> because in the desert, they, the Africa Corps actually implemented light machine gun teams separate from the squad uh, in a variety of roles. In fact, um, you can upgrade these for five points to an aircraft, essentially pinnacle mount type uh, weapons, and that's the way they should be. And if you actually see pictures in the desert, you'll see some of the emplacements with the LMGs mounted in such a way that they can go against aircraft. That's the beauty of this this book. It is very specific to these two years of the war and give you options that you don't have, uh, you didn't have until now. All right. I'm not going to go through every single one in here, but it's really good. One thing they did do, it's kind of neat, is in the main rule book, sorry, the main Armies of Germany book, they lumped basically the Panzer III, H through J and L all together. And what they're recognizing is that when the Panzer III L was introduced, it was fitted with a slightly different 50mm uh, gun. It was actually better than the previous version, uh, which was the L42. But anyway, what they do is, in this is they give you the option if, uh, you know, if, you, if both players agree, basically, that you can actually buy the original Panzer III G, H, and J, which is in the Arms of Germany book, and downgrade it to uh, the, low, the, the older gun. So by reducing the point value of 15 points for a regular, 20 points for a vet, you actually suffer a minus one pen. So it be, actually becomes more of a light anti-tank gun. Uh, that's, that's a pretty big drop, but still, Panzer III with light anti-tank gun is probably not unreasonable. And when you're going up against stuff in the desert, uh, British early war, that's, that's not really that big a deal. The British don't have, I mean, they've got strength eight, or eight armor vehicles. Yeah, the Matilda's a nine, but most of it's eight or seven. So having a light AT gun, not a big deal. All right. And this is real nice. They have the Soviet uh, 7.62 uh, anti-tank gun and an aircraft gun. These were 
was captured in the Soviet from the Soviet forces during Barbarossa, and they were used extensively in East East uh, in Russia as well as the desert. So you have another uh, option to have a different looking AT gun for your Germans. All right, well, anyway, so theater selectors. I'm not going to go through every one of them, but whereas Duel in the Sun gives you some specific uh, ideas for which platoon selectors out of the main army's book to use, this campaign book actually gives you new options. So here we've got, instead of your reinforced platoon, Commonwealth reinforced platoon, you actually have a 1940 to 1942 version. And with this, essentially you're just buying regular early war infantry. You can't get vets. Uh, matter of fact, you can't get vets in any of it. But in the process, it tells you which anti-tank or port T options or field artillery options you're limited to. Okay, So field artillery, you have to have a 25-pounder because they didn't have anything besides that. An aircraft gun has to be the 40-millimeter heavy automatic cannon because that's what they used. And a tank gun has to be the two pounder in 1940-41. Has to be the six pounder in 1942. So that's I like that. And then what they actually limit you, and I love this in the armored car area, to the cars used in the desert. So in 1940-41, you only have four or five options. You've got the Marmon Harrington, the Morris C9, CS9, the Recce Carrier, the Mark 6B, and the Morris LRAC. Instead of all of those uh, armored cars that are available to the Brits. So. This is, to me, that's the value of this book. This book really helps you understand what the two sides were actually able to use out of all of the equipment they had. There are no Tigers in this book because there are no Tigers available. The Pac 75s, I don't think there are many in here, if any. Uh, Pac 50s is what they've got. Or sorry, Pac 38s. Boy, I got that wrong. Pac 43s are the. Uh, 75 millimeter German gun. Pac 38s are the uh, 50 millimeter. Most of these in the field were the Pac 38s. So if you play with this set of rules and these set of selectors, you really limit your options, which is great because you get a real flavor of the fighting that actually occurred. And later in the book, just like in Duel in the Sun, they go through the rules for fighting in the desert. All right. Here's an interesting approach. They now include some tank war variations. Uh, here is a 1944 British Armor Brigade. That's essentially a tank war uh, list. Basically, yeah. And over here in the, the 1942 Armored Brigade, the, the, the British did not do combined arms warfare like the British, or sorry, like the Germans in the early war. So they're going to have more tanks. Or more infantry. They're, they're not going to be balanced equally. And so this gives you the ability to represent that very well on the tabletop. Uh, now this is, the, this is the part I really wanted to cover. Uh, I'm not going to go into every other page in the selector for, uh, for the other countries. But Commonwealth, has, what they've done here is they've recognized some of the Australians, the South Africans, Indians... Uh, and the uh, New Zealanders as different than the British. The British come with six possible national characteristics you can choose from that are supposed to represent, you know, anybody there in their in their army. What they've done is they've decided, no, you know what? If you want to build an Australian force of uh, units that represent an Australian army, you can pick one of those six or you can use one of these two, you know, aggressive patrolling or never give up. If you want to get a South African National Army, then Bloody Mindedness or Quick Reaction become available to you. New Zealanders have four to use from, uh, to use. They can have formidable fighters, which represent the Maori uh, units. Uh, oh, sorry, it's, there's only three. So special units for, yeah, sorry. Uh, if you want a Maori only, you would get the formidable fighters. And then you can use Steadfast Under Fire and Superb Junior Officers. I'll get to those in a second. Uh, Indian national characteristics. So your actual Indian brigades would be unsurpassed bravery and manpower of the empire. A lot of things you get, options you get. Quick reaction is an example for the South African. In that case, you can reaction fire at enemies that are charging you within six inches. You are never 
surprised. You can always are allowed to react to being assaulted. Being able to yeah, react reaction fire at six inches or less is fantastic. Uh, the other bloody mindedness characteristic: if the unit is hit with a non-HE uh, hit, you put a pin marker down. But if they don't take any wounds from that hit, the pin marker goes away. That's pretty decent. Uh, junior officers here basically allow the first and second lieutenants to have a 12-inch morale bubble. They still can only snap two at six, but still, 12-inch morale bubble for a plus one or plus two morale, uh, or steadfast under fire. After rolling for pins caused by an HE fire on a New Zealand troop, that's pins. You, you round, you, I love this, you have the pins rounding down. So if you take a pin or a pin from an HE round, you don't take any pins. If you take two, you only take one. If you take three pins from it, you only take one. You have it and round down. There's some really good, flavorful entries here. So, um, the national rules for the Italians, they've, they get some additional ones, uh, but just two. Oh, no, three. There's, there they are. Poor officers avan Avanzare, I hope. It's an Avanti. Uh, and again, they have their own selectors to cover this two-year period. Here's your AS-42 uh, infantry platoon, full gory parachutes. There's your parachute infantry that were formed in 1942. Uh, and here's the actual machine gun platoon for the, let's see, I'm going to try it again. Bersaglieri. Okay, Bersaglieri, uh, Italy's toughest troops is what they were called. But it's a very, very good uh, list here to build something that really resembles a very unique unit in the Italian army. Anyway, and of course Africa Corps, they have several different versions. Um, here's, I'll give you an example of the, how these are different. This is the DAK and a tank gun platoon, uses a, essentially a re reinforced type of approach. Lieutenant two, here's the thing, instead of getting two infantry squads, you get two anti tank guns. And then you pick 0 to 1 infantry squads, 0 to 3 uh, light machine gun teams. Then you get 0 to 2 guns from anti-tank guns again, and anti-aircraft guns, or field artillery. So th now you actually get to build what is often seen as one of the characteristic flavors of desert warfare, is the Germans would often lure the British tanks onto their anti-tank gun positions, and the defensive positions of the Germans were heavily leaning toward air tank guns because the German method of warfare was to defeat, defeat tanks with anti tank guns and anti tank rifles, not to defeat them with tanks. Your tanks exploit and sow havoc in communications and infantry units. You let your anti tank guns do the work of taking out those pesky British armor. Okay. All right, so anyway, that's the nature of most of the selectors. Now, what well, one thing you're going to love if you are a free French fan is they've really gone in a lot of detail of making the free, for, free French forces specific to the Western Desert. So you get special army rules for them. You get the free French reinforced platoon. And here's all your units. Uh, the special free French headquarters, free French, you name it. There's everything here. Personally, I don't, I'm not going to be modeling these uh, but I, if I were a free French, free French fan, I definitely would try to say that fast twice or three times. This would really be something I'd want to do. So, uh, now the one thing they expand on more, and I like this because, again, historically, you're, you're learning a lot about the time period and the, the battles, is it goes through more of the special forces. That's what the raid, the two raid scenarios are all about. This talks all about the uh, Long Range Desert Patrol, or Desert Group, and how you can build... This, these uh, units. Now what's nice is this goes into a lot more detail than what's currently available on you know, Warlord's uh, website or in the Armies of Great Britain book. So if you're a uh, SAS or uh, um, Long Range Desert Group fan, you're going to love this. Alright, so that really kind of covers it. Because again, like I said, there's the SAS version of it. So you get Long Range Desert Patrol and uh, SAS. All right. Okay, Italians have some special Desert Raider abilities. So they did use a lot of Desert Raiders as well. And 
then you have essentially a, I want to almost call it a reprint with some additions uh, to the Western Desert type uh, rules. You got now boulder fields specifically called out, depressions and wadis, sand dunes. They all affect movement in certain ways and cover certain ways, which is really nice because it gives you the ability to really feel what it was like in the desert. The one thing that I want to point out though is they've got uh, more, they got the rules again for digging in, but it's strange because here they talk about when you dug in, uh, it counts as down when shot at, even if it's not down. Which and they in parentheses says additional minus one to be hit, but down in the current second edition rules is minus two. So it appears that they have a misprint here. Uh, I don't know how they're going to FAQ that or what they're going to do about that, but that is one thing that I found kind of interesting. They didn't actually bother to uh, correct that because a lot of this seems to be the same as what was before. They do have uh, digging in with uh, during the game and digging in with tanks. There's a lot of uh, neat rules for that. And there's hull down rules now. I'm not going to go into those because you'll, you'll read if you're interested in this theater, you'll have fun. This, the rules presented here are specific to this theater, uh, with the exception of minefields. Uh, everything else pretty much limits you, is limited to what you would do in a desert campaign. So, whether, you know, stretching from Iraq to Syria, Palestine, Egypt, Libya, this is, there's the rules you're going to use. I love the book. I'm very glad I did get it, uh, and in another video that you'll see in just a, hopefully, well, in a couple days, uh, I'll do a product review of the, the units, the, the models I bought, uh, along with this, so that I can get started. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope this was kind of helpful to you. I don't know if it, it, don't know if you're interested in the Western Desert, but if you are, this is what it is. If you're been on the fence about it, and you haven't been able to see the book itself, Here's, here's your chance. All right. So thanks a lot, guys. Share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.